But he doesn't just stop there. He doesn't just inspire Scripture for us. He illuminates Scripture for us. He is the one, like I told you early, earlier, that helps us understand him. It helps us understand what God wants. He is the one who explains Scripture to us. Has anybody ever read a portion of Scripture uh, sometime back in the past and been like, huh? Anybody ever read the Bible and been like, is this English? Okay, but then either through your own development, through your listening to other teachers and all those things, someone illuminates the truth of that Scripture, and you're like, oh, well, that makes sense now. Do you know why that makes sense now? Did you all of a sudden get smart? No. The Holy Spirit provided you with the uh, insight, the understanding of what he was saying there. Jesus spoke in parables all the time. You know why he did that? So the hardheads wouldn't know what he was talking about. He wanted to confound the people who were wise by world standards so that they would only know him, God, through the, the, the Holy Spirit revealing truth to him. He talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at your verses there. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, he says, We have not received the spirit of the world, which doesn't understand God, but we have the spirit who is from God, the Holy Spirit, that we may, we may what? Understand what God has freely given us. It's only, he's like our little decoder ring. He's the one who makes sense of what he has said in, in his word to us. Now, when I help my kids with math, I'm the math wizard. I'm the one who explains math for my kids. I usually send them off to do their math. My son Cooper just got a, a worksheet a little while ago. I said, all right, bro, go and try. And he'd go and do the ten questions. He'd get like seven, eight, nine of them right. But there always will be one that he doesn't exactly understand. And me and my infinite math wizardry will sit down and I'll say, well, it looks like you're going to fail that test. Wish you were born smarter. Is that what I say? No, I say, oh, listen, bro, let's, let's start this over. Let's start from the beginning. Uh, you said that A plus B, whatever, all the A's and B's and square roots and parentheses. I know how to do it. but, but, but he, it's, it, So my role is to help him understand how to get to the answer. That's the Holy Spirit's role in our life. We're doing the math of this thing, and sometimes we get it right okay. But a, you know, a majority of life, a majority of lives are going to come up against something that they just don't, I don't know how to compute this one. Anybody been there? Anybody there right now? I, I'm out of work. I don't know how to compute this one. Or I'm, I'm in a situation with my relationship with my, my spouse. I don't know how to compute this one. You know what the Holy Spirit's role in that is? As you rest in him, as you rely on him, as you seek him, he, he does the math for you. And he brings you to solution. Why? Because he, he, he wrote the book, he explains the book, and then finally this last thing. Uh, he points us in the directions that we're meant to go. Look at me. Write that down, but then look at me. If you don't get anything else, if you're sitting next to someone who's sleeping like happened in first service, wake them up. Call the guy out. It was so fun. Anyway, uh, but here's the deal. If you don't hear anything else I say today, understand this. The Holy Spirit speaks to you if you are in Christ. He, uh, like you just, uh, the, the verse there that I gave you is in Acts where he spoke to Philip to go and, and, and speak to this Ethiopian eunuch who would eventually put his faith in Jesus Christ. It was kind of like the story I told you about the young guy that was 99% there. Uh, but Philip had to listen to the Spirit and be available to the Spirit so that the, the Spirit could get him in a position to be used of God. And that's what he wants to do with us. Christians, if we could just learn this, that God is constantly at work around us, it's not like he visits us on occasion when we need him. He's always doing something in our midst. It's just most of the time we're not tuned to his frequency. We're not paying attention to what he wants of us. He, in fact, we make a life of trying to say, no, 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 that's going to be weird. I don't want to give that. I just bought this food at the drive-thru. It's for me. I don't want to give it to the guy who's got the sign. on the, he, he should just suck it up and get a job. Holy Spirit. Let him find food somewhere else. Uh, we invoke our rights. We invoke, you know, our, our you know, we're entitled to this because, uh, you know, and, and we have these grand arguments in our minds with the Holy Spirit. And he's like, hey, can we just do this together? I'm not going to say sorry to her. That wife of mine, she's got to fix this, this, and this. And then maybe, just maybe, I'll forgive her and try to work on this marriage. Oh, you petulant child. The Holy Spirit tugs at your heart, reminds you of the truth, 
of your being Christ to your wife who is your church. Sacrifice yourself for her. Love her. Deny yourself. And you're just like, I'm not having it. He, he, he prompts you and he says, trust me. You're out of work right now? Trust me. I got you. No, man, I got to freak out. I got to take it out on my kids, my wife, on anybody I see. I got to freak out. It's going to make me feel better if I freak out. Do you see how we get awry? We get away from, and all the time the Holy Spirit's just saying, hey, I got you. I got you. Uh, Romans 8, verse 26 says that the, the Holy Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. The word help there has only been used twice in Scripture, once in Romans 8 and once in the story of Mary and Martha. You remember them? And uh, uh, Martha was the, the, the sister who was hanging out in the kitchen and just slaving furiously so that she could fix a great meal for Jesus. Mary was hanging out with Jesus and, and just you know uh, basking in his, his presence and his teaching. And, and Martha got so mad at Mary and she said, Lord, why don't you tell my sister to come and help me? It's there and, and then this, uh, this uh, instance in Romans 8 that we see that word help. It's this compound word. It's anti, uh, sune anti lambano in Greek. And it's three words. It means uh, uh, with, against, and grab. And it's this picture. It's like a football season starts today. It's this picture of a gang tackle. You know what a gang tackle is? Uh, it, a gang tackle is when one guy stops the ball carrier, you know, but he's not probably big enough. Perhaps it's a guy in the secondary or something. He's not big enough to wrestle the guy to the ground, but he's holding him, right? The dude may be dragging him down, you know, yard after yard, but he's got a hold of him. But he's not going to bring him down on his own. Now, Sune anti Lombano is this picture of somebody coming alongside of you, with you, and working with you against the one that you're grabbing. It's a gang tackle. Now, what are we against as, as Christians? We're against the, the, the flesh, the, the sins of this world, uh, us getting off the path. Uh, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us so that we can tackle life so that we can have the help that we need in our weakness. Isn't that great? You know what, if, if you don't, I wish I could just download this into your brains and put it in your hearts so that you would know the next time you face temptation, the next time you face defeat, the next time you face struggle and strife, you're not alone. If you are in Christ you have everything in his, uh, in his power inside of you. If you have been uh, saved by Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit stands next to you. He's your wingman, your shotgun, and he can guide you as he convicts you through whatever mess you're in. Praise be to our holy God for giving us his Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's live in it. Let's live in the Holy Spirit. As we sing now, we're going to sing a couple songs. We're going to take the offering. Thought we forgot? No way. But as we take this offering, let's, let's give in response to what we've been given. We have been given the Holy Spirit. And He walks with us, guides us, convicts us. Let's give in accordance to what we've been given. Let's, let's, let's worship because of who the Holy Spirit is and what He's given us. Let's do this all for the glory of God. Let me pray for our offering. God, as we come to you now, we lift you up. And we praise you for who you are. We thank you for all that you've granted us. We give these things back to you as just a token, a small token of what you've done for us. Lord, we pray uh, that in this moment our worship would be from a full heart, a heart of gratitude and praise. And uh, uh, may we lift you up in this place and in doing so uh, give you the glory that you deserve. All praise be to you, God. And it's through your son, Jesus Christ, that I can pray these things. Amen.